dimension, rank, and basis. So the next theorem is the spanning set theorem. Let S be a collection of these vectors v1, v2, all the way to vp. Okay, be a set in a vector space v. So we have a collection of vectors from vector space v, and we call that collection S. And let H, H is the span of these vectors. Okay, all the possible linear combinations of these vectors, which is a subspace. When we have all those possible all possible linear combinations of these vectors that's a vector subspace and we call that h if that's the case then in part a if one of the vectors in s in this collection if one of the vectors say vk somewhere is a linear combination of the remaining vectors so maybe there are 10 and seventh vector is a linear combination of other nine vectors if that's the case then the set formed by s yes, by removing that vector vk still spans h so this span will be the same if even if we remove that vk okay that's what we need to prove here in part b if this h is not a zero vector subspace okay this zero is a vector space just containing zero element if that is not the case then some subset of yes okay we don't have to have all of them or it could be all of them some subset of yes is a basis for h basis means the vectors are linearly independent and they span h so let's do the proof here So here is the proof. Uh, we can rearrange these vectors. Okay, maybe uh, rearranging the vectors, then we can write that vk at the last element. So by rearranging the list of vectors, if necessary, we may suppose that vp, that we can make this vk the last element in this collection. Let's say b vp is a linear combination of others so all others means v1 v2 all the way to vp minus 1 okay if we write in this way then since vk is a linear combination of remaining vectors and this vk is now being the last kind of we can rearrange them if necessary then that vp is a linear combination of v1 v2 all the way to vp minus 1 so we have this Let's say that equation one. Now to show that this yes, this collection okay still spans H. So we want to take a generic element from H. So given any vector x in H, okay, these are ball ball face, so those are all vectors. Okay, given any x in H, we may write because H if we take any vector here then that is a linear combination of v1 all the way to vp so this x is c1 v1 c2 v2 and there is something here uh, and then last is cp vp and the previous is cp minus 1 vp minus 1 okay for some constant c1 through cp now this vp is a linear combination of other vectors we can replace this vp by this combination here okay so cp times these so these are means a1 v1 all the way to ap1 vp1 so this x will be a linear combination of then just v1 all the way to vp minus 1 because vp is just another linear combination of v1 through vp minus 1 and we can just collect like terms so what happens is when we plug in 1 into 2 it is easy to see I mean, need some little bit of work that this vector generic vector x is a linear combination of just a v1 through vp minus 1 thus this v1 through vp, vp minus 1 not all of them spans h because this x was chosen 
this is this was an arbitrary element of h okay so let's do part b so part b the solution so if h is not the zero vector alone okay is a vector space containing only zero element if that's not the case if h is not that okay then some subset of yes not all of them could be there or just some of them is a basis for h so to show basis we need to show the vectors are linearly independent and they span h okay if the original spanning set okay this is spanning set of all v1 through vp is linearly independent then it is already a basis for h because h is just the span of v1 through vp i mean we already know that any element in h is a linear combination of v1 through vp i mean that's the meaning of spanning set but and at the same time when these vectors are linearly independent then this is already a basis that's what we said here if the original spanning set s these vectors okay if those vectors are linearly independent or the set is linearly independent then it is already a basis for h otherwise one of the vectors in s depends on the others so if they are not linearly independent then one will be a linear combination of others and we can delete that by part a because we know that we can delete and still we can span this is h so that can be deleted by part a and we get linearly independent and we are we still get the basis so so long as there are two or more vectors we can repeat that more vectors in the spanning set we can repeat this process just get rid of the unnecessary vector unnecessary means that can be written as a linear combination of others okay we can just uh, delete that okay so we can repeat this process deleting the vectors we don't need that until the spanning set is linearly independent and hence is a basis for h because they are already they already span and when we get linearly independent then they are they form a basis okay and if the spanning set is eventually reduced to just one vector maybe all of gone and just one vector that vector will be non zero unless h is just a zero vector we know that if there is only one vector but that's not a zero vector then that collection that set is linearly independent okay that vector will be non zero and hence li linearly independent because h cannot be zero vector it can be any other vector but not zero and if we have a set with just one vector then that set is linearly independent okay this is the proof now more theorems here the pivot columns of a matrix a form a basis for column a you know column a that's the column space of a given matrix a if a matrix a is given okay and if we row reduce we have pivots in some rows okay and that pivot columns form a basis for column a so we have an example we have an example later okay so the pivot columns of a matrix a form a basis for column a that's the column space a we, we write just column a and the definition here the dimension of a non-zero subspace h so the dimension of a subspace h we denote by dim h that's the dimension h is the number of vectors in any basis for h so there can be more, um, different basis okay different basis just for one vector space and if we count the number of vectors that's the dimension of that subspace okay the dimension of the zero subspace containing only zero that's a vector vector space or subspace is defined to be zero 